Hare Krishna and welcome to all devotees in this uh, question answer session. So I have one question which I came across in our morning class. So I would like to share about that question and then we will go ahead with other questions which we have received in Instagram and other platforms. So the question was about why anger comes and how to handle this anger in our life. So as we know, Krishna has explained many places that Mavev Amsho Jeeva Loke Jeeva Bhuta Sanatana All living entities are part and parcel of Krishna. And originally, all living entities were created in the spiritual world to serve the Lord. Jivera Surupa Hoye Nitya Krishna Das That is the original position of all living entities in this creation. So actually, all of us were created to serve the Lord. And in that way, when we serve the Lord, we experience real ananda in our life. Srila Prabhupada has given example many places. Just like this hand is there in my body. This hand is part and parcel of my body. So, generally we see hand is involved in helping us in many ways. Suppose if I have to eat something, so this hand will help me to take that food item and bring it near my mouth and place it in my mouth and then mouth helps me chew that food. Finally, that food through food pipe goes to my stomach and ultimately, it is a stomach where the food finally ends up. So if the hand thinks, oh, I am just helping this food to finally reach to the stomach. Ultimately, I am not getting anything. So that is a wrong understanding. When the hand is engaged in providing this uh, food to the stomach so when the food gets digested in the stomach from this stomach all the parts of the body gets nourished once the food is properly digested in the stomach so at that time this hand also gets nourished similarly we all are part and parcel of God Krishna and when we serve him the pleasure what Lord gets by our devotion service same pleasure we also enjoy because we are part and parcel of Krishna so like that in the spiritual world our real position was to serve the Lord and enjoy real Ananda in his service. But then, some of the living entities, they became envious of the Lord, his position, that how can Lord enjoy? Why Lord is the only master in this creation? Why I am like a servant? So when some of the jivas, when they develop this envy towards the Lord, they are sent to this material world just to enjoy this illusory happiness of becoming master or God in this material world. So when we come here in this material world, we get this material body with all these material senses and there are sense objects around us. 
So when we get all these senses with sense objects, we all are trying to enjoy this sense objects in this material world. And we all are thinking that if I can enjoy the senses with sense objects, I will attain my real happiness. But the point here is, this concept of thinking that I am this body, these are my senses, is itself wrong. So what happens when we are here in this material world, we are working day and night just to enjoy these material senses. So when a person works very hard and he continuously thinks, Dehayato Vishyan Pumsa, when he continuously contemplates on the sense objects, then what happens next? He develops attachment. There is intense attachment which he develops for the sense object. Can be anything in our life. Whatever we are desiring to get. So a person develops deep attachment and after he is not able to enjoy that sense object or he is not able to get that, the next step is anger, frustration. A person becomes fully disturbed because we are not able to get that sense object. There is deep attachment for that object. And further Krishna explains, when a person reaches this platform of frustration and anger, then what happens? Then there is bewilderment in the memory. And finally, a person loses his intelligence. So, this negative loop of working hard and running behind sense objects and developing attachment for them is a cause of anger and in this anger we lose our intelligence we lose our knowledge discrimination and after that we have no control over our actions Just like Srila Prabhupada has shared a very nice story about two brothers and uh, both of them, they develop a deep attachment for a property which actually belongs to their, belong to their father. And then both of them, because they were desiring, they developed that de attachment for that property. So both of them started fighting one day. And one of the brother, he killed his brother. Because of anger, he lost his intelligence. And then later on he realized, what a blunder I have done. I have killed my brother just because of this property. Finally got arrested and then he was about to be hanged and at that time his father requested the court that already I have lost my son. I already had only two sons. One son I have already lost. So at least forgive my this son so that I can sustain I am already old person so this is what happens in anger this is what happens because of deep attachment for sense objects 
so we have to understand that we have got this rare human form of life and we have to understand our real identity our real constitution position that i am not this body i am spirit soul i am part and parcel of krishna and my real happiness lies in serving krishna but when we forget that and we act on this bodily platform then what happens we think because we have misidentified ourselves we think in this material world that all these sense objects and my senses if they can combine i can enjoy real happiness and wo life we work day and night just to become happy but actually we you know get frustration when we are not able to enjoy the sense object even if we are able to enjoy sense objects suppose even if we are able to fulfill our material desires can we become satisfied never we can become satisfied in fact after enjoying because a soul is not satisfied there is further more frustration for the living entity so that is why krishna says actually this material world is dukhalyam just like we go to pustakale what will get only books so this is a place of misery but if we understand if we are able to understand our real position that this is not my real identity i cannot enjoy on bodily platform there is no happiness which exist by enjoying my senses whatever happiness is there is first of all temporary is illusory and it it is addictive in nature so this kind of happiness cannot satisfy me i am spirit soul living in the living inside this material body and my real happiness lies in serving krishna because i am searching for spiritual happiness this material happiness is not meant for me this happiness cannot satisfy my spirit soul so with this understanding if we live our life and instead of over endeavoring for material desires if we actually work hard in serving the lord in his devotion service then we can attain real happiness and peace of mind then only we can become free from this frustration this anger which is there in this material world okay next question is about who is yog maya and maha maya this is again a, a very uh, interesting question what generally people ask people generally they want to understand what is difference between yog maya and maha maya so as i mentioned this creation is divided into uh two parts one is called spiritual world and there is something called material world material world is only one fourth of the total creation so krishna has two potencies who are managing these two worlds one is called internal potency another is called external potency of the lord internal potency is called yog maya and external potency is called maha maya so yog maya is mainly mainly engaged in administering all the past times of krishna and she 
uh, arranges different arrangements for past times of the Lord, and she manages all the past times between Krishna and his pure devotees. In fact, she is the one who makes uh, sometimes devotees forget a real position of Krishna. So, Yogamaya acts even in this material world when Krishna comes here to perform his uh, glorious pastimes. Just like when Krishna was here in Vrindavan. So, Yashoda Maya, she was acting like mother of Krishna. She being exalted pure devotee of Krishna uh, got this chance to act as mother of Krishna. Otherwise, who can become mother and father of Krishna? Krishna is supreme father. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Sarva Yoneshu Kanteya Murtya Sambhavanti Atasham Brahma Mahad Yonir Aham Bija Pradapita He is a seed giving father of all living entities. So Yashoda Maya, she got this chance to act as mother of Supreme Personality of Godhead. But for Yashoda Maya to act as mother of Krishna, she has to first of all forget that Krishna is Supreme Personality of Godhead. Otherwise she cannot... Uh, serve Krishna as a child, as her child. She cannot treat Krishna as the child. So, Yoga Maya, what she does, she makes Yashoda Maya forget that she is, oh, sorry, that Krishna is Supreme Personality of God. And like that, all the Vrajvasis, they were treating Krishna as a small child. Why? Because this is the action of Yoga Maya. So like that, Yoga Maya acts in such a way that she makes all arrangements for pastimes of Krishna. And of course, she is managing entire spiritual world, all the pastimes of the Lord. And there is something called external potency of the Lord. And who is she? She is Durga, Mahamaya. So Durga, she is playing a very important role. In fact, she has a thankless job when she is dealing with the Jeevas in this material world. So, as I have just told you, all of us have come in this material world because of this envy towards Krishna. And we all have come here in this material world to become like Krishna. We wanted to become master, not servant. So, all of us have come here but just like son of a rich father, if he runs away from the home, then father cannot be happy anytime. Father will always be thinking of his son. Because son, without his father, without any help, he will always be struggling in this world. So, like that, all of us are rebellious souls. We have just left our Supreme Father, Krishna, in the spiritual world. And all of us have come here to enjoy independent of the Lord. So, Father cannot be happy without his Son. So, Father will go outside search for his son and bring him back because father knows my son can never be happy outside. Similarly, Krishna being our supreme father, 
comes here in this material world and gives us this knowledge of bhagavad gita makes us understand what is our true constitutional position how we can be happy and gives us this clue how we can go back to home back to godhead back to spiritual world which is our real home not only that krishna sends his pure devotees in this material world we call them acharyas just like ramunchare madvachare so many pure devotees have come in this material world and they all are preaching this knowledge of bhagavad gita they all are trying to give us this instruction that this is not the place for us our real home is there in spiritual world we all have come here just to satisfy our material desires and in this way we cannot be happy here so krishna comes here then krishna sends his pure devotees and then his knowledge in the form of scriptures just like today we have bhagavad gita and in a compassionate mood krishna tries in different ways to bring us back but still all of us are very stubborn and we want to be here only we don't accept instructions of krishna in fact we are not at all inclined to understand what lord is trying to teach us so then krishna has assigned one very important personality in this material world who is durga to make us understand this knowledge just like parents when they are trying to you know uh, make a child understand something so if the child is submissive he will immediately accept instructions of his parent of his parents that whatever my parents are trying to tell me that is good for me and he will immediately follow those instructions that is a case of obedient child if a child is very obedient submissive immediately he will accept all the instructions but suppose a child is not obedient he is not submissive and parents know that this is something which is not good for him and still is asking for that then what happens sometimes parents they scold the child they chastise they sometimes even beat their child not because of envy but because of love they want their child to learn something which is good for him similarly although krishna comes here gives his knowledge in the form of bhagavad gita sends his pure devotees everything is done but after that krishna has assigned a very important duty to durga to actually make us understand that this is not the place for us so durga is compared to like a superintendent in this material world and this material world is compared to like a prison house and she has 10 hands these 10 hands represent 10 directions just like there are 10 cctv cameras observing all our activities from 10 directions like that she is observing all our activities from 10 directions and 
just like suppose you get some uninvited guest at your home you're not expecting them but they have come and you want to send them back how you can send them back one way is you can directly tell them that actually you're not expecting you you have come here so can you go back which definitely we will not do especially if somebody is related to us somebody is connected with us second option is in case of uninvited guest we don't serve them so this is what durga is doing she knows that her thankless job is to send us back to the spiritual world to our real home and this is not the place for us so what she does she is trying to give us different ways some miseries in our life in the form of three kaleshas which are called adi bhautik adi devik and adhyatmik which means miseries through our body through other living entities in this material world or through this natural calamities just like we are observing floods are coming in bangalore and many other places and then our own body our own body mind system sometimes we get disturbance through our mind through our body and then from other living entities around us just like a mosquito biting us in the night that is also causing disturbance for us so durga she is continuously giving us some miseries like that so that all of us can develop some detachment from this place and we can go back to home back to spiritual world so this is the goal of our life and to attain this goal of life first of all we have to take a submissive mood unless until we are not submissive we will not accept instructions of the lord definitely we can be inquisitive we can ask questions to understand these instructions but we cannot be arrogant because there are many things which we may not be able to conceive right now but if we are submissive we will be able to understand all those instructions in bhagavad gita and if we follow all these instructions of bhagavad gita then in this very life all of us can go back home back to god at so i will end here today's session thank you very much for coming do join us for all upcoming sessions and uh, next sunday also we will have some more questions today we were not able to discuss all the questions so we'll take up in the next sunday thank you very much for coming hare krishna subscribe to our channel and to get the latest updates do not forget to press the bell icon hare krishna